The very first test case I have here is just trying to interpret the integer 22. Let's work on that next. Going back to our AST, we're going to design a tree type here for representing the expressions in our source language. One of those kinds of expressions is just integers, like the integer 22. So I'm going to build this out as a variant type and have a constructor named int that carries along with it an OCaml integer. So this will represent an integer from our source language. Uh, we don't have plus or multiplication to parentheses yet. We'll get to those later. Next, let's take a look at the parser and extend it to handle integers. Now, remember what the interface between the lexer and the parser is. It's tokens. The lexer needs to produce a token stream, which the parser then consumes. So in my parser, I actually need to define what the tokens are. I've got one definition here so far, which is just the end of file or EOF token. That's a special token that the lexer is going to return when it reaches the end of a string that it's trying to parse. So we're kind of punning strings with files here. Now I need to have tokens that are integers as well. So I'm going to go ahead and define a new token here uh, with percent token. And I'm going to call this token INT, capital INT for integer. And this token needs to carry some information along with it. It needs to actually carry an integer with it to say which integer we parsed. So I'm going to put that in here as an OCaml type int. Now this is funny syntax. Let's not get too far into it here. But basically what we're saying is behind the scenes, there's going to be a variant type for tokens. And this is telling the OCaml parser to add a new constructor for that named int, capital I-N-T, uh, that carries along with it some information of type int, small case I-N. OK, so now that we have that token, we need to go ahead and parse it. So I have what's called a rule here for parsing a program. And so far, all I can parse is an end of file. But I want to be able to parse more than that. In particular, I want to be able to parse expressions out of these strings. So what I'm going to do is extend this to say, actually, I want to be able to parse an expression here. And in fact, that expression should then be followed by end of file. So it's like an entire expression, an entire program. There's nothing left else left to do. And I want to call that expression E. And as a result of parsing that program, now I want to return E rather than just unit. And in fact, now that I'm going to do that, I want to return as the result of parsing all of this an expression node from the AST. So all of those changes were driven by the fact that I had created this expert type and added a constructor to it. Now, as far as parsing that expression, let me introduce a new rule. And there are going to be many kinds of expressions we could parse by the time we're done. Uh, but this one's just going to be an integer. So I want to be able to parse an integer. Now, I'm using INT there in capitals because that's the name of the token. So when I see an integer token, what do I want to do with it? Well, I want to return a value of the AST node to represent that. So that means I need to return an int constructor. But of course, I need to return which int it is. And so to do that, I will say that I want little i to be the actual int value that was parsed there, like 22. So this will then return int 22. That builds out our parser. Now I need to take care of the lexer so that it can transform a sequence of characters into an integer token. So in my lexer, I already have a rule that says that it can parse end of file. It can just rec recognize the end of a character string. Uh, but I want to extend this to be able to parse integers, or really lex integers. So when I see an int there, and I'm going to need to define what int is, the lexer already knew what EOF meant. That was a special thing, but I need to define int. I want it to return an integer token. And I'm going to need to fill that in of what particular integer I want to return as well. OK, so there's two pieces to this. One is to actually define what an int is. I'll do that up here. So what is an integer? Well, an integer is composed of digits. So let me define a digit first. Digit is going to be uh, any character in the range 0 through 9. 
So a digit is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9 as a character. And now an int is going to be a digit. And in fact, it's going to be one or more digits. So you've got to have at least one, and you can have as many of them as you like. That's what the plus means there. And optionally, let's allow negative integers as well here. So I could have the hyphen or dash or negative sign there, uh, and I'm going to make it optional. That's what that question mark means. An int can either start with that and be followed by some digits or not start with it and just contain digits. Okay, so now that I have defined what an integer actually is in terms of a character sequence, what am I going to return along with this int token? Inside the OCaml lexer, there is a module called lexing, and it has a function lexeme in it. And if you apply that to the special variable named lexbuff, which already exists, we didn't have to do anything to create it, what that does is it takes whatever was matched over here, in this case, a sequence of digits, maybe with a minus sign in front of it, and returns that as a string. So lexeme.lexbuff gets me back that string. Of course, I need to convert that to an OCaml int because that's what my AST carries along with it, and that's what this token carries along with it. So I will apply the standard library function uh, int of string to that, to actually turn it into an int. Now let's go back to main and look at the parse function inside of it. So the parse function there, in which I've annotated the types of the input and the output just to make it completely clear what they are, is going to take in a string and re return an expert, that type that represents an AST. Inside the lexing module from the OCaml lexer, there's a function called from string, and you pass in a string to that, and it gives you back a lex buff, a, a, a lexer buffer. This is something that can, characters can be read from. I then pass that lex buff to the parser module, in which there's a function called prog, standing for program. And that function also takes in another argument, which is a read function from the lexer. Now, the names of those are no accident. You might already recognize them, in fact. So in my parser file here, I actually had a rule named prog, and I had to said that's where I start parsing. That causes the OCaml parser generator to create a function called prog that I can call and get back an AST. Likewise, in my lexer file here, this read, that was a choice of my own, that's causing the lexer generator inside of OCaml to create a function called read. And that is what is transforming a sequence of characters into a token. So you can see it all laid out here. Lexer.read is going to take in that lex buff, which is uh, representing a character stream, and give back a token. Parser.prog is going to take a function that can transform a lex buffer to a token, take in the lexing buffer, and give us back an AST. And so that's what my parse function is doing. And now already, right away, I can go ahead and parse integers. So if I rebuild my code here, I can now parse the integer 22, which I couldn't do before, and get back a value of the AST, which is an int node containing 22. Of course, if I try to interpret it at this point, I'm still not there. I haven't implemented that interpreter yet.